Hello everybody and welcome to the second part in our Medieval Makerspace video series. In today's videos we will be making medieval siege weapons. However, since we don't advocate the destruction of someone else's castle, we will be making them in miniature. To get started, you will need some supplies. Our main crafting ingredient, our main construction material today is, uh, well, very tiny timber. We are using popsicle sticks. All told, the first weapon we'll be making today is going to take about 22 to 25 of these craft sticks. Uh, these are the standard size for popsicle or craft sticks, not the large tongue depressors. Uh, and you'll need about 25 of those. Um, in addition to that, we need an arm for the, uh, the weapon we're using, and for that today we are using a single heavy-duty plastic spoon. To attach our pieces together, you will need a hot glue gun and the glue sticks that go with it, as well as an ample supply of rubber bands to lash pieces together where the hot glue needs some extra support. To provide hinges and other such things we have with us today, binder clips. We'll be using about three of those, maybe one or two more. And finally, for this project, you will need some tape, whether it is duct tape or electrical tape. I don't recommend trying to use scotch or masking tape. Uh, masking tape is a bit iffy. Scotch tape is definitely not strong enough and will not stick in the way that we need it to today. Let's dive right in, clear off our workspace here. We need to construct a basic frame. Now the weapon we're making today, uh, the first weapon that came to my mind when I thought of medieval and around that period of combat, and many other people's minds possibly, is the catapult. Um, sometimes called the mangonel, uh, although they do have their subtle differences. The catapult was a basic design of uh, throwing a rock a very long distance or a flaming bundle of uh, kindling or um, jars of pitch. Uh, it worked in medieval times and times before that, even as far back as... Now, I'm not a historian here. If I get my historical facts wrong, please correct me. But I believe uh, well before the medieval period, these were also used. Um, and they, like just about all engines of that time, they revolved around a concept of rope tension, uh, or rope torsion. Um, which means that at the base of the, the fulcrum, let's say that this was the, the square that comprised a catapult's base, where the, the throwing arm would be roughly there, right at the base of the throwing arm there would be coils of rope that were cranked and cranked and cranked and twisted and twisted and twisted until there was thousands of pounds of pressure behind that and the arm was latched back here by a, uh, a hook or a gear and winches here would crank that rope over and over and over until this was straining to be let loose and then it would unhook and the arm would fling forward and be stopped by a crossbar roughly there. The arm would hit the crossbar and send whatever payload is in the, uh, the catapult's arm flying with all the, for the force and the power of that, that coiled rope there. Many siege engines of the time used rope tension, although we are not using rope tension to power this. We will be using elasticity from rubber bands. So to get started, we do need to make a frame, a base, and I am going to start with the base that comprises where the catapult hits to stop its kinetic motion and send the payload forward. All right, to get started, we are going to build the frame, the part of the catapult that the arm would fly up and hit. Um, 
so to do that, we're going to need some pretty thick bundles of popsicle sticks to provide a lot of support where all the force is headed into. And to do that, what I recommend is starting with a small section of tape and laying it down. Gather up five of these popsicle sticks that we have. So one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to stack them up together very neatly. Like so. Kind of tap them down, make sure the edges are even like you would a stack of paper. And just squeeze them together and set them down on that lay of tape. Try to get it nice and centered too, just for the looks. Now while keeping them pressed down nice and neat, gather up that last little that little back edge there and press it up against the wood. And from there, we're going to roll it over and over and over until the tape is wrapped all the way around. You don't want to add too much tape here, just a short segment, enough to go all the way around. Otherwise, it gets a little too thick for other things to work in the build. Make sure it stays nice and even, nice and tight. We don't want these shifting around. And I'm just going to pick it up and finish that wrap. Here. All right. When you're finished, go ahead and make two of those. Next, we need to conjoin these two together. And we're going to do so something like that. We want these two to be in uh, the top and the bottom of a square. All right, by now our hot glue should be dry. And here we have the basis of our frame. It's a square, two hollow bits there, and the two stacked up stick segments at the top and bottom. Now we need to add our hinges. It's pretty easy. You just take your binder clips and you're gonna put one on the bottom, stretch it all the way and face it in towards the middle of the square and flip these things in. Then do the same at the top. Take a binder clip, stretch it out, clip it over, and let go. Both binder clips should be pointing inwards. Just like that. Now, on whichever side you decide to be the bottom, you will want to remove the outer clip. On, I'm sorry, the outer wire segment on whichever side you determine to be the outside of the catapult. And to remove these, you just squeeze them really hard 
until it slides out of that little black segment there. So on the bottom of our catapult and on the inside facing of the catapult, you want this to still be here. On the top of our catapult, see the best way for you to see that is for me to flip it around, but remember this is our top. You are going to want to remove the inside. So wherever you have the, the remaining one on the other side, you want to remove that facing here. So right here we're going to take this out. Again, just squeeze really hard and it should slide out like that. Perfect. So we have these two wire segments opposite of each other. This one strictly isn't necessary, but it helps in, in the end. So here's the frame of our catapult where the arm is going to come up and hit, but it doesn't stand up too good on its own. Even the slightest little bit of energy knocks it over. So we need to make this a bit more stable. And the way we're going to do that is to add more wood, something like that. We need to construct a frame for it to stand on. It's going to work much like our side segments. We're going to attach a piece there, hot glue to cross the stack, and we're going to do the same on the other side. And then we're going to make a back end as well. So there is our stand, 
to allow our catapult to not fall over during its firing process. And that's the frame of your catapult completed. Now all that's left is to attach the arm. If you feel that this is not strong enough and that the force of firing this catapult or drawing it back might break things, you can add some diagonal supports along here. This will improve the overall strength of your piece, but it is tricky to accomplish with how these are set up. You would have to do some cutting and reshaping of wood, most likely. So, from here, to attach an arm, we're going to use this binder clip that we left here. The arm is going to be attached along this binder clip, giving us a hinge to work with to slap that arm forward. To attach our arm to our catapult, we're going to be using a combination of a few different tapes, such as electrical and duct tape. We need the arm itself, which is our plastic spoon here, so we can load things in and fire it. And we need one more popsicle stick on the back side of the spoon to act as a structural support. I know you're hearing that terminology a lot right now, but it's very, very important to have good structural support in something that is going to be flinging and stopping and drawing and resisting different kinds of energy. Otherwise, when you fire it, it might just break. And who knows? It might just do that. We'll find out together. So, the idea here is going to be to have the spoon attached solidly to the binder clip stem right here, probably wrapping that bottom in tape along with a support on the back side. And we would wrap up the entire arm with tape to secure it together. I may also include some hot glue in certain areas just to make the whole thing a bit more stable. Okay, so we have the arm of our catapult made and wrapped in electrical tape. Uh, now you want to make sure that your arm is completely centered on your top binder clip there. So whatever you gotta do, slide that on over, which might actually mean putting this back into it. Alright, that's just about centered again. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll take this piece back out and drop that down. So now we need something that's going to allow our arm to constantly be drawn up to the brace. And for that purpose, we have our rubber bands.
To get this hooked around, you, you're going to need something that's going to hold it still here on the back end of your spoon. And to accomplish that, we have more binder clips. You're going to want to take this and go around the back of your spoon here. And if you've wrapped it enough in the electrical tape and you have that back supporting uh, craft stick, it should stay nice, it should stay put right about there. And then you can remove the stems. This will give your arm a nice little latching point for the rubber band. So, this is the back side of that binder clip there. You can see there's a little hook right there that's normally part of what holds the stems in. We're going to hook our rubber band over that and kind of nestle it down in there. Now the rubber band, if I had to guess, is going to be the first thing on this catapult to break, uh, unless these go first. So this part it can actually be replaced in the future because there's nothing gluing this on. So after you hook that in there, wrap it around and now put it over the back side of your spoon here. And that is actually the finished product of our catapult. This could fire something with reasonable force. It has all the force of that rubber band there and my braces are creaking backwards ominously so we have to find a way to fix that. It's good to know this is why we are experimenting. So if you remember I earlier talked about adding diagonal supports it looks like those are going to be necessary and for that I actually think I have the perfect solution large tongue depressor popsicle sticks, as well as a cutting implement. So what we're going to try to do is something like that, where we are going to attach them to the side up here and to the side down here so that our brace has more force and power behind it. All right, so now I am holding the support up to the side to see if, uh, or to see where I need to cut it, and I'm just gonna make some approximate marks. And again, the, the motto of today is this is not an exact science, so it doesn't need to be perfect. We can fill in any gaps with hot glue. So I'm going to make a guess here at where I need to do this. So what I plan to do is cut an L-shaped 45 there, and I've already cut the bottom of that there. That's going to go on the bottom of our catapult. And then this here, the reason I did it like this, is because that's going to be glued on, and then it's going to have a little support here to push against the back of our catapult as the arm gets drawn back.
All right. After we give it a little time to dry, our catapult should be just about finished. And there is the finished product. With the I'm not going to test pulling back the arm until I know for sure that these extra supports are dry. So, uh, I'm, I think we will test fire this with the other machines that we managed to make. And we'll see which one works the best. I'm particularly excited for our next machine, a trebuchet.